Hello and welcome to today's reflection. I'm Julie Butcher, Curate at Holy Trinity and St Michael and All Angels. Today, the lectionary reading continues exploring Paul's letter to the Romans, starting at chapter 4, verses 13 and reading to the end. Paul has been explaining that God promises Abraham that he would be father of many nations, not because Abraham was good at following the law and somehow deserved God to make him the father of many nations, but because Abraham trusted God, believing what he had promised. And it's in this trusting and believing that Paul said, led God to make this happen. We'll pick up the reading at verse 18 where Paul really unpacks this and takes it a step further for his readers then. And what he tells them, I think, is equally relevant for us today. So chapter four, verses 18 to the end. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, the word, it was reckoned to him as righteousness, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believed in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. And this is the word of the Lord. I love that bit, and it talks about hoping against hope, that clinging on when all seems hopeless. And it does look a little bit hopeless for Abraham and Sarah in the reading, doesn't it? It almost sounds foolish to trust But God is wanting Abraham to trust in him, to believe that life is possible with him, to step into that future with him. Today, when people ask us to trust them, we tend to want some kind of proof that they're trustworthy, or at least that they can give us some assurance that what they're promising will be as they say it will be. I remember uh, shortly after I began my last job in a school, we had to reorganise some of the classes. A parent stopped me in the playground one evening to let me know how unhappy she and the other parents were at the proposals that we'd made. I could understand her concern, but I felt that we'd made good plans and they would be okay. And I just asked her to trust me. Why should we? She said, we don't know you. How do we know we can trust you? Well, it was fair enough, I suppose. I'd taken it for granted that the trust I'd built up in my previous job for 22 years would somehow travel with me. Now, I'd have to start building that trust again, I realised. And let's face it, that's often not a bad thing. You hear all too often of people who've trusted others and then they've been cheated or even worse. So the early Christians had chosen to trust God, despite the danger which that created for them in the Roman Empire of the time. Why? Why had they chosen to do this risky thing? Well, they believed that God had raised Jesus from the dead, who'd been crucified for their sins, and they encouraged each other in that faith. It was a faith that called for courage and steadfastness, in the face of the situation that they found themselves in. Now, we too can find it hard at times, especially in this very sceptical 21st century that we live in. It's difficult to hold on to our faith when there are so many would-be distractions and challenges around us. 
But just as with Abraham and those early Christians, if we hold on to our faith in a God who loves us and doesn't change and look to strengthen those things, to do those things which help us to strengthen our faith, like praying each day, reading the Bible, reading God's word, worshipping God together with our Christian brothers and sisters and encouraging each other. We do these things, we'll be strengthened as our faith grows closer to God. The more we do these things, the less our faith will be shaken by the uh, distractions and things that we see about us. The short collect for today seems to sum this up well, I think. So let's finish with it now. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I hope you have a good day. I hope there are some opportunities for you to strengthen your faith and to encourage, be encouraged by other people that you meet and to be an encouragement to others. So bye for now. I'll see you again soon.